namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa namo dasa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodhasa. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> okay, I want to begin with the questions, Q and A, because uh, I have a few questions. Uh, that are connected with earlier lessons. And also another two questions uh, which are related to today's lessons. <clears throat> but first question is very long, so I will not mention the slide. Uh, one of the students asked why she was uh, uh, in the retreat in Malaysia uh, together with other men and women. So during the retreat, they have to observe a precept, hmm? a precept. Then when uh, the ceremony is uh, uh, in one, within the ceremony, right? one occasion they are going to transfer the merit, then the monks tell the devotee and a meditator uh, to uh, to touch the shura of uh, the shura of uh, the passing in front, the one gentleman tell loudly, "Don't touch! Don't touch!" <laughs> because they observe a precept. <laughs> so when you observe a precept, we normally suggest not to not to touch uh, uh, women. <coughs> Uh, actually, in the Winia Pedicard, Winia Pedicard, uh, sometimes the monks may, uh, how to say, the women may touch the monk accidentally, right? Accidentally. If we do not have any feeling or pleasure feeling regarding with the touching to the women, so it's not no apathy. No kitty, no kitty. Sometimes when we are taking a train or, you know, sometimes accidentally we may touch women. So we have to be very careful, mindful, you know, mindfulness, not to have any attachment to, if possible, not to, uh, not to touch women, right? But here also, those who are observing a precept, so they are suggested not to touch. Then when I was uh, conducting uh, a preset and here in MV, when women asked me, uh, is it possible to touch her husband? I mean, uh, for in case, you know, they're, they're staying at, uh, together. So of course they will not stay together for that night. But in case, when her husband touched her body, what happened? And I told her, uh, uh, if you don't have any um, sensation or, uh, how to say, the uh, feeling of pleasure in, in your mind, you're not breaking a, a precept. Uh, this one, uh, I will not mention the name because <laughs> if I mention the name, they were afraid to ask me again. Huh? I wish to ask Bandi, what is Buddhism's stand on a man or a woman staying together as a husband and wife without getting married? They don't see the need to get married and seem perfectly happy as a captain. Good question, it's a good question. So I think uh, in my previous lessons, I have already said that um, 
marriage is considered as a secular affair. So people can consider themselves. Uh, people, they can decide, you know, whatever they wait. None of, uh, how to say, uh, as a monastic, it's not our duty, you know. Buddhism also do not pro uh, prohibit or prevent any, we don't have any rule, you know. <laughs> That's very important, you know. I think in Singapore, I think you know the tradition, right? So many religions, normally they interfere the marriage. But nowadays, uh, human right is getting more and more popular. So those religions also are facing the problem. So according to them, if you do not get marriage in their uh, uh, religious uh, religious monument, like, like, so your marriage is not the official one. It's not considered as the official. <clears throat> uh, I think I will mention one example in Myanmar is a Buddhist country, so we have a one law uh, regarding with the marriage. So if you have uh, acknowledgement or acceptance, uh, seven houses in your neighbors, is considered as a official marriage. And seven houses at the east direction, uh, you know, any direction, you know, seven houses. So that me is very, uh, I don't know, how to say, it's logical, right? As long as people accept, especially uh, people in the society nearby, you know, as long as people accept the marriage, not a problem, you know, not a problem. Of course, uh, getting a married with the lawyer is the best, of course, the best. So Buddhism will not interfere, even as a monk, right? So we are not allowed to officiate uh, wedding ceremony. Or, so we are not allowed to interfere. Another one here, so I think uh, so he want to know, especially, uh, is it uh, sexual misconduct if they do not get married? What do you think? No, right? But one thing we have to take note, uh, in Singapore, if someone is 80 years old, right? So they don't need any permission from the parents. So they can decide uh, to get married or to stay together without, without marriage. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. So if we follow, um, how to say, uh, secular laws, I think not, not a problem, not a problem. Because uh, women, sorry, parents already know that he or she is 80 years old, has the freedom to choose her or his partner, right? So it doesn't matter, I think. It is also in accordance with the uh, teachings of the Buddha because the Buddha normally uh, take care of the uh, permission, permission from the guardians, right? Permission from the guardians. So that me, uh, husband and wife, uh, they stay together without getting married. And also they see that they don't, uh, they don't need the marriage. They don't need marriage. So they, they stay together happily. I think nothing wrong, right? Nothing wrong. If they are over 18, 18. But maybe it might contradict what I have said in earlier my lesson, right? So by that time, I make conclusion. Uh, uh, when you look at what the Bora taught, it seemed it seem that um, uh, uh, only you get permission from your, from your guardians. It is better to have a sexual relationship. 
But when you look at uh, permission point, right? When someone is 80 years old, already permitted, right? So you don't need to take any permission from your guardians. Should be okay, I think, right? Should be okay. So therefore, marriage or wedding, wedding ceremony. So it is a secular affair, right? Secular affair. So if they are faithful to each other, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, if you have any question for previous my discussion or question or any discussion. <clears throat> okay, no. Maybe they can attain enlightenment, right? They can attain enlightenment. And also they are on their own camp. So regarding with the gender equality, I already said that, uh, taking some of the reference from the Bali Canon. Especially the Buddha said that, um, as long as you are walking on the path, the noble full path, you can attain enlightenment, right? So by that I said that, Mahayana tradition beautifully said that, anyone has potential to attain enlightenment. So they say Buddha nature, the seat of the Buddha, whether man or women, even animals, right? So they have the seat of the enlightenment. So, uh, man and women, they have equal right regarding with gamma and enlightenment. These are two important ones, you know, as a Buddhist. <clears throat> Another one, of course, um, in the Pali Canon, in Engotra Nikaya, Engotra Nikaya, chapter one, soda number 279. Chapter one, soda number 279. So Engotra Nikaya, so said that. I don't want to say the Buddha said that. <laughs> because Bhikkhu Bodhi make a, uh, I want to say, his I want to say his opinion. Maybe later I will, I will talk about it. So in Nika has said that um, uh, it is not possible as a woman to become the Buddha. Samasam Buddha, Samasam Buddha. Only the man. Very clear, you know, very clear. The Soda said that in Gautra Nika. Chapter 1, Soda number 279. Women cannot become Samasambodha. Only men has possibility to become the Buddha. To become the Buddha. So there is a one story, interesting story in Myanmar in 90, uh, 19th century. Uh, one of the Buddhist nuns, she's very intelligent and all the wevas in uh, Bali Canon. And she is a very famous uh, Dhamma teacher. Then one time, uh, she offered some fruit to the very senior man, uh, well-known monk. And uh, she, she, did not go there, she did not go there by herself, and she asked her pupil, to go there and offer the fruit and ask them to tear the, uh, I want to say, famous monk. Bandi Bhaimpachuro, this dana, may I become the Buddha? <laughs> Actually, she went to know the opinion of that monk, you know. The man, of course, he, uh, he said that no way, you know, no way, you know, like this. So this is the, um, the opinion of most of the monk, not only in Tiravara, but also in Mahayana, because um, all these uh, teachings can be found not only in Tiravara Pali Canon, but also in uh, Agama, which are counterpart of uh, Pali Canon, uh, translated in China, into China, and also most of the schools, most of the schools. So therefore, uh, there is no uh, 
in this regard, we can say that there's no gender equality. You know? we have to, if we take it as a truth taught by the Buddha, the Bhikkhu the Bhikkhu said that. So maybe th these lines might be added in later part because of the Indian culture. Hmm? Indian culture. Anyway, um, even regarding with the Bhikkhu ordination, right? Bhikkhuni ordination, struggling, stay struggling right now. So most of the Tiravaram country, they do not, they do not want to accept it because according to them, Bhikkhuni order already dying out. If you want to become a Bhikkhuni, you need two Sangha, two Sangha community. Bhikkhuni Sangha and Bhikkhu Sangha. So first, you need to get um, investigated or permission from Bhikkhuni Sangha if you want to become a Bhikkhuni. Then uh, Bhikkhu Sangha need to investigate again, then we allow them to become Bhikkhuni. So Theravada tradition, most Theravada tradition are uh, Tiravara monks, uh, they say that no Bhikkhuni Sangha, so therefore no way to revive Bhikkhuni Sangha. But uh, some of the uh, Tiravara monks from Sri Lanka, uh, so they are uh, uh, they do Bhikkhuni ordination uh, in Borakaya. I think around 1992 or two or three, something like that. So with the help of uh, Bhikkhuni Sangha from Mahayana tradition, according to them, uh, Mahayana Bhikkhunis, uh, they ordain in Sri Lanka, in Ali, uh, maybe something like uh, six century city like that. Sorry, I I, I do not know is that uh, is that timing. Uh, and then they go to, they go to uh, China, and this Bhikkhuni tradition stays surviving. For that, uh, the uh, the as uh, Bhikkhuni Sangha from China, and the women need to get investigated and get accepted from the Bhikkhuni Sangha, then Bhikkhu Sangha ordained again. So Bhikkhuni ordination is revived in Theravada tradition. Uh, there are a lot of Bhikkhuni Sangha in Sri Lanka. So there are a number of Bhikkhunis in Thailand, but Thai Sangha Council do not officially accept it. Uh, in Myanmar, no, reject totally reject. <laughs> so in Myanmar, there's no Bhikkhuni Sangha in, uh, within the country. So this is a, for that reason nowadays, uh, feminism is getting popular, right? Human right for women is getting popular. So therefore women say that uh, women also should have the right to become Bhikkhuni, right? Which is counterpart to Bhikkhus. Then uh, some, uh, some of the well-known and educated men like uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi, Ajahn Brand, Ajahn Suchato, Bhikkhu Analyo, etc. And they study Vinaya Pitaka thoroughly and they said that it is possible to revive Bhikkhu Nisanga. So they are promoting, they are promoting that, um, I'm gonna say, Bhikkhu Nisanga should be revived again. Okay, just for knowledge, just for knowledge. So I will go back to the qu question again. Here, uh, women cannot become the Buddha. So here I will quote one soda from uh, Sounda Nikaya. <coughs> Sounda Nikaya. Sama Samboda Soda. Sama Samboda Soda. So that, that soda came from, uh, came after another Lakana Soda. You see that uh, the Buddha preached the first sermon, uh, the Machaka Bodhana Soda, to a group of five monks, right? 
then at the end of the discord, they become sort of banned. Then the Buddha, the Buddha taught second salmon, another like an soda. The discord says on non safe. At the end of that soda, so those, a group of five men became enlightened, enlightened one, fully enlightened one, or they became an Arahan. So, uh, a group of five men, they became an Arahan. So by that time, uh, only five, right? only five. <clears throat> In the Vinaya Pitaka, Mahavaka Pali recorded that incident, saying that, so there are six Arahan in the world. So there are six Arahans in the world. A group of five men, Plex, the Buddha. Remember that the Buddha is an Arahan. So, no surprise, we are chanting all the time. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato. Arahato is an Arahan. The Buddha is an Arahan. What is Arahan me? It simply me. Uh, the Buddha is far away from defilements. When, whether you are man or women, we can an Arahan. You don't have any defilements in your mind. No negative mental state in your mind. That's Arahan. In that sense, you have equal status with the Buddha. Hmm? Very important one, very important one. So here, the Buddha me, the meaning of the Buddha is to know the Four Noble Truth. A group of five men, they know the Four Noble Truths fully. So therefore, they became an Arahant. At the same time, we can say they are the Buddha, you know, they are the Buddha. The Buddha also know the Four Noble Truths, right? Same, you know. You bright it, uh, you are walking on the Four Noble Truths, sorry, the Noble Eightfold Path. If you are bright is in the Noble Eightfold Path, you will know the Four Noble Truths. If you know the Four Noble Truths 100%, you become an Arahant. At the same time, we can call you are the Buddha, right? You are the Buddha. So therefore, uh, knowing the Four Noble Truths and eradicating all the defilements in your mind, that's equal status with the Buddha, you know? Equal status with the Buddha. So therefore, in, um, in Kota Nikaya, the Buddha talk about Eight wonders of the world. Sorry, eight wonders of Bodhisattva. Eight wonders of Bodhisattva. One of them is there is only one taste in Bodhisattva. The taste of liberation. If you know the four noble truths, your mind, your mind will be liberated from suffering. Right? If you become an hand, your mind is liberated from suffering. And the Buddha knows the Four Noble Truths, and the mind of the Buddha also is liberated from suffering. Same, you know, same status, the same taste. Very important facts, right? So therefore, in uh, one commentary said that we have a three types of the Buddha. One is Samasambodha, Samasambodha is Gautama Bodha, Kasaba Bodha, Sikhi Bodha, like that, right? Samasambodha. Bhagavad translate normally translate a uh, uh, fully enlightened one, you know, well enlightened one, like that, right? Samasambodha. Another one is Pichika Bodha. Uh, how do you say? We normally translate uh, not a silent Bodha. <laughs> uh, Private, yeah, maybe we can see the private Buddha, yeah. They know the Four Noble Truths, but they cannot explain what, it's, what, what are these ones, you know? 
so Pechekan powder. Another one is Sawaka powder. Sawaka powder. Sawaka means disciples. Disciple powder, right? So they have the same name, the powder. If you know the Four Noble Truths, you become the powder, Sawaka powder, right? In that sense, women also can become the powder. Huh? Women or anyone, no? can become the Buddha. That's very important one, very important one. Of course, if you want to become the Buddha, like a Kodama Buddha, you need to accumulate a lot of perfections, right? A lot of perfections. Even, normally I give a simple example, even as a man the Singaporeans, uh, only a few prime ministers, right? Prime ministers. The same status regarding with the citizenship, but different qualities. So here also, uh, regarding with uh, liberation, or knowing the Four Noble Truths, the same status, you know, the same status. So that me, uh, the Buddha me, the literal meaning of the Buddha is the knower, the knower of the Four Noble Truths, you know. So there, for that reason, if you know the Four Noble Truths, you become the Buddha. No different, you know, no different. Only the qualities. Then, uh, this life, as a woman, you do a lot of good deed, and you accumulate a lot of Hosan Kusala Gama, then you make a wish. Then I want to become fully enlightened one. You can make a wish, right? As a woman, you can, you can. That's very important one. But uh, this is a, not in my opinion, you know. This is the opinion uh, in, in the academy fee, in the academy fee. So, um, according to Samasamboda Soda, the difference between disciple Arahan and the Buddha is very, you know, very thin, you know, the difference is very thin. And that's so that the Buddha said that. The Buddha or Samasam Buddha, they know the four, they, they discover the four noble truths. Sorry, uh, they discover the noble four path, the noble four path. And they know the four noble truths. Then, Savaka, Savaka Arahan, they follow what the Buddha taught. They follow what the Buddha taught. Regarding with the knowing the Four Noble Truths or practicing the Noble Eightfold Path, no different, no, no different. The difference is the Buddha is, the Buddha discovered the Four Noble Truths. That's all, you know, that's all. The rest are the same, you know. So for that reason, uh, in Academy Fee, so they will say that um, even in Theravada, we have a too much, too much gap between Savaka Buddha and Samasam Buddha. Savaka Buddha and Samasam Buddha. But in Mahayana, it became uh, too much different, you know? So they're trying to uh, differentiate Savaka path or Samasam Buddha path like that, right? So whether you are Tiravara or Mahayana, the main thing is, if you know the Four Noble Truths, anyone, whether man or women, it doesn't matter. If you know the Four Noble Truth, you become the Buddha. The Buddha me, the one who knows the Four Noble Truths. So in that sense, a female also can become the Buddha. <laughs> okay, any question? Continue to learn uh, today's topic, um, taking, taking intoxicants, intoxicants, Sura Media. So in the five precept, we normally take, uh, so the last one, right? The fifth one is the Sura Media Majapamadatana. Sura Media Majapamadatana. So I take the translation of Bhikkhu Bodhi. Translation of Bhikkhu Bodhi. Sura Media, actually normally 
people think that only alcohol, you know, if you are refraining from alcohol, so you are see that five reasons is finished. No, not just alcohol, right? Here you can see, right? It means indulging in liquor. Why? Intoxicants, intoxicants. So here, intoxicant can be anything, you know, anything that make you heatless. So the basis for heatlessness, the basis for heatlessness, is not just alcohol. It can be so. Therefore, I, I write all type of intoxicants such as drug, opium, alcohol, etc. So here I will add uh, if secret make you secret make you intoxicant, then we can add secret here, right? Secret also. So, but here we have to uh, also trying to adjust with the Buddha talk regarding with the karma, right? When we are talking about karma, motivation. A motive is very important, right? Sometimes we are using alcohol for medical purpose, right? To cure our diseases. The purpose is to cure your diseases, right? Some people ask, uh, if, we are, uh, if we are eating some of the food that contain alcohol, is it breaking this precept? No, it's not so because um, you are taking it as a food, right? As a food. But, but if you are eating that food just to get drunk or something like that, <laughs> you're breaking, right? So therefore, motivation is very important. Motivation is very important. When I was young, uh, I, um, I have a motion tight, right? Motion tight then I take a medicine to get motion loose, you know, motion loose. Um, so that medicine is very tasty, you know. But if I eat it uh, more in the morning, it may not be very tasty. I eat in the, in the evening, you know. By then I'm very hungry. Then I'm trying to eat, very tasty, you know. Then I'm trying to eat some more. Very tasty. <laughs> I eat a lot. <laughs> so by that time, I have to. I have a lot of motion, you know. Uh, and I cannot stop. So here, the monks, as a as a novice no, novice monk, so we have to refrain from taking dinner, you know, taking dinner. So here, so I mean, I mean, eating, you know, medicine, just like a food just like a food. Even though it is medicine, I'm taking it just to fool my stomach, right? So that is breaking sila, breaking sila. So even though it is tasty, if I take it as a medicine, okay, I'm not breaking, right? So therefore, motivation or motive is very important, right? So here, um, this precept, it's not just alcohol. All type of intoxicant that make you heatless, you know, that make you heatless. So nowadays there are a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of means, you know, to use it. To use it. One interesting thing, uh, Sura Media is not stated, especially taking alcohol, drinking alcohol is not stated uh, as a the cause of unwholesome actions, akusala kamapata. So earlier we have we have learned right ten uh, causes of unwholesome deed, unwholesome actions. So drinking alcohol is not stated there, right? So therefore, um, also in Brahmajala Soda, that talk about morality for monks. Monastics. So we cannot find uh, Sura Media drinking alcohol. So therefore, 
uh, in the academy fee. So they say that the fifth precept is added in later part. That's academy fee, you know, academy fee. So in earlier time, according to them, according to them, so the Buddha uh, did not mention drinking alcohol as a breaking five precept or precept. You know? Because maybe according to them, uh, alcohol is uh, invented or made use of, made use by many people. So therefore, uh, according to them, you know, Buddhist men, they see seriousness in the drinking alcohol. So therefore, they add in the five precept, in the fifth precept. But when we look at the Bali Canon, so there are many, many places, you know, that mention five precept, five precept. It's very difficult to accept. But if you find only one or two places, it's, it can be accepted. So we, we can accept their point of view. You know? Sura media is added in later part in the academic fee, in the academic fee. But so there are many places the Buddha mentioned. One thing to note, to take note, it's very difficult to add one discord in the Bali canon, you know, because of the, um, you know, oral tradition, you know, oral tradition. As you know that um, Buddhist teaching were uh, carried out throughout the ages by oral tradition, you know. I learned uh, teachings of the Buddha from my teacher, not only only one, not only one, you know, a group of disciples. We learn together from our teacher. The occasionally we sit down one place, we recite. But if I add one more discord, you know, one more opinion, the other people will point out, where you get this teaching. So if the other people, the other men do not agree, no, you cannot do that, you know, you cannot do that. So therefore, this is a, one of the, uh, one of the statement uh, taught by uh, Opula Rahula, Opula Rahula. I think in the, what the Buddha taught, in his book, what the Buddha taught. So that me, um, it's very difficult to add, you know, another teaching, you know. So I'm not saying that, uh, um, Everything is taught by the Buddha. So regarding with this one, you know, five precept, we can find so many places. Okay, so um, that is academic point of view, academic point of view. So therefore, some people say that by, you know, some people, some mitzvah people, they know that, <laughs> they know this one, you know. Uh, one of the Burmese, uh, a uh, famous writer, uh, very famous one, and was very clever in writing. So he also write a book, uh, a book about um, his meditation experience, meditation experience. Uh, so he is a drinker, he normally drink alcohol all the time, all the time. But later he ordained as a man, he tried to refrain from it. And he just dropped. Even he uh, trying to refrain from drinking alcohol. But he said, he write in his book. So actually, uh, in Akusala Gamapata, there's no drinking alcohol. No prohibiting, pro, uh, uh, preventing from drinking alcohol. So it's nothing wrong, he said, if you are aware of yourself. If you are not, um, if you are not making any problem to somebody, you know. If you are not, I want to say, uh, harming other people. If your behavior, you know, drinking alcohol, is not affecting other people, it doesn't matter. He said, looking at this one, you know. That uh, the one of the monk uh, pointed out, you know, 
No, they are, you know, uh, the Buddha talk about five places and many places, but he, he rejected, he rejected. Then the man asked one more question. How about if you are meditating? If you are meditating. Sorry, uh, no, the other said that, the other said that um, I drink alcohol a little bit, but I mean stay, I want to say, have awareness. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking. In normal time, it's okay. But he said that when I am meditating, it affects my concentration. You know? He said that. So therefore, uh, if you are staying in the society normal life, if you can control uh, your mind, uh, stay okay, stay okay, you can see that. But if you are taking medi uh, meditation, it will affect, it will affect. So therefore, uh, normally we give example of um, small dust on your, on your pen, you know. You put a small dust on your pen. It doesn't matter. It will not make any difference, right? Then you take that small dust and put it in your eye. What will happen? <laughs> then you, your eye will have a lot of problem, right? So we have to understand in such a way. So, so therefore, the Buddha said that Pama uh, Dattana, the base of heedlessness, right? Heedlessness. So when you are meditating, you have to refrain from drinking alcohol. Even you drink a little bit, it will make a lot of different, you know, a lot of different. So, uh, then, uh, what is the, uh, the meaning, uh, how to say, for that reason, the commentary, in academic fee, academic fee said that, drinking alcohol especially, cannot be found in Akusala Kamapata or in the Brahmachala Soda. So, um, but uh, the comment, uh, it's not a commentary, this is a set commentary. So we have the Bali Canon, the commentary or Tagata define what is, uh, what is in the Bali Canon. Set commentary, trying to further analyze or further clarify some of the things which are not clear in the commentary, you know. So here is from sec commentary, sec commentary. So sec commentary said that having the same nature or characteristics, uh, sura media, so here drinking alcohol, you know? sura media is added into Kamesu Mechachara by the set commentators. So here, drinking alcohol cannot be found in Akusala Kamapata and also cannot be found in uh, Ramachala South. But according to set commentaries, uh, drinking alcohol can be added into Kamesu Mechachara, the top precept, right? Top precept. Both of them are indulging oneself or practicing wrongly in sensual pleasures. Sura media by taste, by using your ten. Kamesu chachara, that precept by touch. If you have sexual relationship with your partner, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're not breaking five precept. But if you have such a relationship outside of your marriage, that's such a misconduct. But we are attached, right? But we are the body. But here, drinking alcohol by using your tan, but we are taste. But your tan is to eat the food, right? To eat the food, to drink the water. That's all. But now you're making use of your misuse, your tan, you know. 
by drinking alcohol. So, um, so that means uh, you are practicing uh, in a wrong way in sensual pleasures. Sensual pleasures. You can enjoy food, it doesn't matter, right? You can, uh, you can enjoy some kinds of juice, etc. So the food, uh, how to say, tasty food and tasty juice, etc., will not make your mind heatless. But if you are making use of your tan, misuse of your tan, by drinking alcohol. So it will make you heatless. For that reason, if you are drinking a lot, right? If you are drinking a lot, then you will do, you know, something that you dare not to do. You know? In the newspaper, there is a newspaper, right? So there is one Singaporean sleeping on the street, <laughs> drinking a lot, of, a lot of alcohol, you know? Normally, he will not dare not to do sleep on the street, right? Because of drinking alcohol. So therefore, in that sense, uh, drinking alcohol or taking intoxicants are added into Kamisu Mecha Char. That precept, sexual misconduct based on bodily touch, right? But drinking alcohol based on the taste, you're making use of misuse, um, sensual pleasures. In other words, you are indulging in sensual pleasures too much, right? Too much indulgence. So this is a, um, the answer given by sex commentators. So there are many places that talk about five precepts. I think uh, later I will, I, will, I will talk about one soda. Okay, any question up to here? No question, okay. So now I want to talk about one, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, thanks Bante for the um, introduction on the five pre fifth precept on alcohol. Mm. So in conclusion, because precept is to refrain, uh, but what is written is indulge. So does it mean refrain from indulging or refrain from taking in moderate amount? Normally, Viramani is refrain from. Refrain from me. Um, uh, so that me, uh, you don't need to refrain from any juice, or, right? So if you are taking juice or drinking juice or uh, something that make uh, that do not make any heatlessness that you can you can indulge you know some of the juice you can you know you can indulge in sensual pleasure it doesn't matter but here regarding with the alcohol right of course using uh, inlet tan you know so therefore I think uh, better look at the um, this one this is a literal meaning you know literal meaning. Kame sumi in sensual pleasures. Mecha charami wrongly practice. Wrongly practice. So you are, uh, you are enjoying sensual pleasure in a wrong way. In a wrong way. You are eating delicious food. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in a, in a right way, right? Right way. You are drinking juice or water, etc. You are. Uh, indulging in sensual pleasure in the right way. Uh, but if you are drinking alcohol, you are practicing uh, in the wrong way in, uh, in sensual pleasures. Thank you, Bante. Okay, yeah. So here, kame uh, su mi, kame su in sensual pleasures, me cha cha me cha mi wrong, right? Me cha mi wrong, wrongly. Practicing wrongly. This is a literal meaning. This is a literal meaning. So here, indulging one semi is just the, how to say, an English, you know? Okay. 
the question. All right. Then I want I want to continue the recording with the alcohol. Kumba Jataka. Normally, I really call Jataka Jataka. Maybe because Jatakas are controversies. Jataka normally, Jataka Pali is Pali canon. Normally, what the Buddhists know is the Jataka stories. Jataka stories are not Pali canon, it's commentary. commentary. So you have to know that, you have to know that. When somebody say Jataka stories are not taught by the Buddha, you have to accept that. Of course, may not be all, may not be all, because Jataka story came from commentaries, you know? So here, what I quote is from Pali Canon, Jataka Pali, Jataka Pali, Gompa Jataka, Gompa Jataka. So to talk about the ground story of this, what the Buddha taught, Jataka Pali, the commentary mentioned is story, story about the original echo hall, you know. In this Jataka, Kumbha Jataka, we can find the original echo hall, you know. So at the time of the Buddha, uh, according to commentary, at the time of the Buddha, um, uh, Wisaka and her friends, 500 ladies, uh, they went to festivals and they drink alcohol. Then they visit uh, Jidawana Monastery together with Wisaka. Some are laughing, some are dancing, some are making noise because of alcohol, you know, alcohol. And the Buddha knew them, you know, the Buddha knew them. So their behaviors are not acceptable. And the Buddha trying to uh, um, perform supernatural power in a way that the whole mon monastery became dark, you know, to the darkness, no more light. Then those women, they became afraid because there's no light, darkness, to the darkness. Then uh, because of fear, so their mind became a lot. <laughs> they, you know, uh, the taste, honestly, the, the power of alcohol disappeared. And the Buddha trying to emit uh, the light again, and the Buddha preach uh, this background story, background story, the original alcohol. So in ancient time, uh, when Hanta usually go to forest, to look for elephant tags and etc. Expensive one. One day he saw <coughs> he saw that part. So there is a big tree and three branches. Three branches. So at the base of three branches, that there is a hole. You know. So there are some water in it. So the part. So the drink the water from that place, and they became drunk. And they fly, and they, uh, uh, see, they fall down on the ground, on the ground. And many parts also doing that, you know, drink the water, uh, you know, at the base of the tree. And then they fall down on the ground. Then after a while, so the hand are thin that they die. No. After a while, they fly, you know, they fly. So it's very strange, uh, very strange things, you know. So the hand are trying to go up on the tree and see the water, right? And he also drink that water, drank. <laughs> it's a kind of alcohol, you know, a kind of alcohol. Then after a while, he wake up, and wow, it's a good taste. <laughs> he has added that to uh, that that juice, uh, that uh, liquid, you know, that water, that water. Then he he bring that water and uh, and go to the hermitage. One of the hermits staying there, so they 
drink together, get drank, you know. <laughs> so, you know, it's a bit trees, and um, in one layer where there is a three branches, you know, three branches. But that tree has a, a hole, you know. In the rainy time, water go inside. Some of the leaf and some of the fruit go into the, the water. And also, some of the bud, they bring uh, rice, you know, rice or patty, right? Patty from other place. And when they are eating those, Rice also go down into the uh, into the water. The wind, uh, hot hot sand, you know. When they get exposure for the hot sand, the water became wine, you know. It became a kind of fermented alcohol. So even the bud, they like that taste. They get when they put on the on the ground, and also the hand out also, you know. Added, added to that uh, that water. So according to Gomba Chataka, uh, Chataka number 5012, so I think you can read yourself, I think better mind is not, not enough to tell such a, such a story. So I want you to read, to read yourself. So uh, this is a, the beginning of alcohol. According to Jatakatis, according to Jatakatis. So later, those hunters and hermit, uh, they, uh, they drink all, there's no more, and they invented, you know, that, that one. So it became uh, alcohol, and they bring to the society, and the whole country became, you know, drinker, you know. Drinkers. So that's the beginning of alcohol. So, Bodhisattva, Buddha to be, by the time, is a Saka, the king of the Deva. So he knew that if all the people in the human realm are drinking alcohol, the whole society will be, the, the whole society will be corrupted. So therefore, he came down. He came down as a disguising himself as a young man, you know, holding the bo the bottle of alcohol, selling, going around, you know, places, selling alcohol. By this is his uh, how do we? I, I would say that is a advertisement, right? Advertisement. How 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 you say? This is a advertisement or a protest, you know. Advertise, right? So the company they advertise their protests, you know, using some, you know, some of the advertisement. Here is, you know, advertisement by Saka. You can see that <clears throat> having drank liquor, one commit evil deed by action, by speech, or by thought. Having committed evil deed, one goes to hell. This advertisement. Then he said that, buying this pot filled with the liquor. He's selling his product, you know, by making this, you know, advertisement. Maybe just like a nowadays, uh, secret, you know. So in the secret uh, box, they write, so this secret way seriously damage your hair. But people do not care, right? <laughs> they don't care, you know, <laughs> they stay drink. So actually in Singapore, you can see that, you know, there are a lot of, you know, pictures, you know, it's really scary, you know. But they don't care, right? Here also you can see the Saka, the Kena Deva advertising his product, Lika, alcohol. Saying that after you drink alcohol, you do a lot of unholy and deed by body, by speech, by mind. By this, <laughs> so because of that, uh, people became awake. You know, 
they begin to realize uh, side effect of drinking alcohol. So then the whole society began uh, corrected, you know. So they, they made their way. So this is a interesting story regarding with alcohol. So I think I want you to read uh, Jataka, Gomba Jataka. It is better, interesting. <clears throat> then you can type, you can Google it, you know, you can Google on internet, very easy nowadays. If you wait, you can also use, uh, you know, ChatGPT, you know? Better, you know? ChatGPT is very precise, you know? Okay, so, any question? Also, I want to continue one soda, which is interesting, uh, Raja Soda, in Kota Nikaya, chapter five, soda number 178. So, this soda is interesting. So the Buddha is talking about five precepts, starting with the killing, right? It's someone who refrains from killing. The king will not make a rest man. The king will not make you any, uh, any problem. But if you are killing men or women, then you'll be arrested by the king. Similarly, if you are stealing, if you are committing sexual misconduct, if you are, uh, if you are telling a lie. Lastly, the Buddha said, if you are drinking alcohol. So in that soda, the Buddha talk about a lot of uh, negative effect of drinking alcohol. You can see that, the Buddha said that. This passing under the influence of liquor, wine and intoxicants, has taken the life of a woman or a man, or he has stolen something from a village or a forest. So here, from a village or forest means everywhere, you know? It's the idiom, I think that is the idiomatic expression. Or he has committed misconduct with the summer as women and gays, or he has ruined how Sura or how Sura sang with the full speech, telling a lie. So that means, uh, if you are drinking alcohol, you lost your mindfulness, clarity of the mind. You may commit the other four, right? You will commit killing, stealing, such a misconduct, I don't know, in, uh, I think in the, um, uh, in the, uh, in the film movies, right? In the movie, after drinking, they make a lot of, you know, mistake, even sexual misconduct, right? Sexual misconduct, or killing, stealing, telling a lie, telling a lie. So that me drinking alcohol, very important. If you can, if you are drinking alcohol, there are a lot of, you know, negative side effect, negative side effect. <coughs> so I got this soda because they have one question from, I will say your, your answer, your, 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 his question. You know. uh, he asked this question long ago, two months ago, huh? two or three months ago. You know. but I told him I will answer later. So uh, it, it's interesting, right? It's interesting. Uh, the Buddha talk about the, you know, seriousness of drinking alcohol or taking intoxicants. So, some young men, they are addicted to drugs, right? Because of that, they even kill, you know, people just to get their property. You know? Even they kill their own mother, you know, mother. Because when they're asking money, the mother can do not give. Became angry, then kill the mother and take the money like that. That's a one story, uh, Tibetan story, Tibetan story. 
one Tibetan monk went to a remote village. Then, uh, I want to say, Spin Star, right? Spin Star Me, um, Sinke Women, and All Farm, Echo Hall, number one. Then, uh, no, no, uh, he offer a sheep just to just to care and eat the uh, go the sh sheep and eat. Another one is the um, uh, herself, you know. She offer that if you would, you can uh, have a sexual relationship with me like that, right? So she offer three things, you know, three things. Uh, Sorry, two things first. You know. A sheep. If he accepts a sheep, he needs to care. You know. Animal, animal, sheep. Sorry, my pronunciation is very important. Sheep, right? Sheep. And then also the lady offer herself uh, for such a relationship. Then the man said, no, 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 we are not allowed to care animals or you know, to have a uh, such a relationship with the women. No, we are not allowed. The later, the lady offer alcohol. <laughs> the man tried. The later, he, he began drank. Uh, he killed the sheep, and also he had such a relationship with the women. <laughs> the Tibetan story, you know. So, emphasizing seriousness of drinking alcohol, right? Alcohol. So, um, so therefore, uh, if you can, better to refrain from drinking alcohol. Then, uh, in one soda, so the Buddha said that drinking liquor, wine, and uh, intoxicants repeatedly pursue, develop, and cultivate it. It conducive to woeful planes. So yeah, I also highlight, you know, in earlier precept, you know, earlier more, more contact, we have to pay attention here, repeatedly pursue. If you do some time, seem to be all right. <laughs> of course, it is akusala, but not akusala kam, uh, kamabata, you know, akusala kamabata. Develop and cultivate it. Conduce it to hopeful planes. For one reborn as a human being, drinking liquor, wine, at maximum, conduce to madness. Very logical, right? Very logical. So when you are drinking alcohol quite often, you become mad. So your awareness, your mind is not in normal. Not in Norman. And you can you can see even in your environment, right? Some people they drink a lot and their mind became like a mad person, you know, mad person. So, uh, so therefore, I think it is important to take note. We have a different degree of, you know, doing and who's indeed, right? If you are drinking alcohol. And that make you hitless, no mindfulness, no awareness, the worst, right? Then you cannot control your mind, then you make a lot of problems to, 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 your, to your wife, to your children, and the hobby became horrible, right? Horrible. So that is a, I think that is an uh, important you know, lesson. Or minimum. Maximum, you can go to hell. You can become, uh, <laughs> you can become animes. You can become Peter like that. Huh? Not only hell. Actually, here awful planes. You know? So actually, uh, in the soda, it's not mentioned as the awful plane. Three places: hell, animal realm, or beta realm. Beta realm. And actually, because of uh, PowerPoint slide cannot fit in, so I'm trying to contain. So here, minimum is it can 
conduce to madness in your next life as well as in uh, this life, right? Then in Sota, there is one, one, um, one thing. One of the sakya, sakya, sarana, uh, sarana, uh, sarana, sarana. Actually, his name is Sarana. You know? Huh? Sarana, right? So he drink alcohol all the time. Before he die, and he start doing that, and he listen to the dharma, then he become sort of bana. <laughs> The whole life he drinks, he is drinking alcohol, you know. Then, just before he died, he uh, stopped drinking alcohol, began sort of pan up. Yeah? It's also an encouraging story. No? <laughs> okay, then I will, I will go to the uh, question. Uh, maybe I can mention uh, uh, one thing, one thing, you know. So, I have two questions. He said, Dear Bandi, I have two questions. Number one, why is smoking considered a violation of the fit precept when it doesn't necessarily lead to heedlessness and carelessness? So here we have to look at Bamadatana. Bamada that make you forget forgot, you know. How about drinking uh if you are taking secret quite often, it can damage your memory, right? Can many can damage? Cannot. You don't think so, right? You don't think so. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attention, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I think attention. Actually, I so therefore I said in earlier time, including. Taking secret, right? Taking secret. Um, if you, in normal day to real life, you, you, do, you may not think it is a, how to say, it will not affect your mind, you know? As I earlier said, when you are taking meditation, even smoking can cause uh, instability. Stability. Of course, it's a, a little bit controversial if we are saying that secret. So therefore, in uh, uh, we add this secret into this uh, the fifth precept uh, is kind of how to say the base of heedlessness. Heedlessness. So if you are smoking, you lose your clarity of the mind. That's very the main thing, you know. The opposite of pamaratana uh, is mindfulness your mindfulness. So, I think smoking can prevent some of the, uh, you know, uh, clarity of the mind, clarity of the mind. So, therefore, in, uh, in Sri Lanka, especially in Sri Lanka, as a man, if you are smoking, very serious, you know, very serious. So, therefore, the man, they went to smoke, they go to toilet. <laughs> Very serious in Sri Lanka, not in Burma, not in Sri, uh, Thailand, you know. It depends, you know. So they take it seriously. Or uh, maybe, according to them, maybe they, they add this uh, taken secret, I see, uh, under this Sura Media. Actually, normally within that Sura Media, the, the fifth priest I just. Uh, if smoking is an addiction, it's kind of the reverse. If you don't take, you will not be alert. You are not energetic. Mm. So, so to me, it is, and so long as any addiction is harmful. So we must think in this way, then we can accept that smoking should not be um, accepted. La. It's good to keep. Mm. Uh, to you want to keep into the yeah, precept. Because, because it's reverse, you see. If you don't take, you will not be alert. It's just a sometimes drinking coffee or so. <laughs> any for, for addiction, that, so yeah, yeah, you're right, any you're right. addiction. 
Uh, yeah, Thank you're you. right. Is it true that we keep the fifth precept in order not to break the first four precept? If so, does drinking alcohol without causing harm to anyone still result in bad karma? So yeah, the first part, um, we, I have already explained, you know, by Godin um, Raja Soda from Goda Nikaya. Hmm? After drinking, one can commit the other four, you know, Aho Sankama. But regarding with the second part, uh, if so, does drinking alcohol without causing harm to anyone, including one say, you know, one say, still result in bad karma? So as I earlier said, that if you put small tests in your eye, yeah, it will make many problems, you know. You know? If you are still put on your, on your palm, it's okay. If you are normal daily life, stay okay, you know. Some people, they drink, um, they mention just for health. Huh? <laughs> so there is a uh, recent uh, scientific discovery that uh, an earlier claim, drinking wine will make you healthy is wrong, you know? Recent scientific uh, discovery. It is a, it's not right, not the truth. Drinking wine, uh, it will uh, support your echo head. No, it's not. Recent, recent scientific discovery. So of course, uh, just like a smoking, you know, if you are smoking, then you have a concentration, certain kinds of concentration. So because of that concentration, you may be able to, you, you may have a new idea as a writer, as a programmer, right? You call it programmer, right? <laughs> of course, they, so they have to think a lot, right? They need one support. Yeah? But some people drink uh, coffee, right? If they are drinking coffee a lot, it can cause, you know, center made to your clarity of the mind, you know, like that. Uh, actually, we are talking about the degree or the degree, right? You drink alcohol to some extent, you don't have any, uh, uh, you stay, stay, how do you say, your mind stay normal. You can stay, can focus, and then, of course, it is a back karma, akusala, but it will not, uh, it will not be uh, the cause of akusala kam. The cause of me, uh, it will not reset, and go into awful destination, awful destination. Maybe it can prevent your mindfulness when you are meditating like that, you know? Like that. So we have to look, look at the degree. So when I'm talking about meditation, I will talk about the degree of unwholesome, how do you say, the degree of unwholesome one, you know? Later part, later part. Okay, any question? Bhavaratam Bhavaromanu Jesu Sakya Muni Pagava Kata Kecho Paragato Bala Vidya Samangi Tansu Katan Saranatamu Pemi Raga vi raga manin jama sokan Dama ma sangata ma patikulan Madura mi mampakuna suvipatan 
ดามะมิมันสารนัตธรมุเปมิยัตตาชาเรนามหาพาลามาหุชัตุสุสุสิสุปุริสัยุกเอสุอัตตาชาปกัลัตเตมะตัสเตสังกามิมันสารนัตตามุเปมี